Hi, my name is Meg Cassell, and I'm the oboe professor at St. Pete College in St. Petersburg, Florida. Today we're going to be talking about reed making, reed wrapping, and the rough scrape of oboe reed making. I'd like you to introduce you to the tools that we use. The first one we have here is a knife, a reed making knife, a double hollow ground knife from the company Landwell, a Canadian company. It's probably the most versatile of all the oboe reed knives. It's a really good quality, really hard steel. Um, I use this mostly for tip work. The next knife we have is an ando knife. This is a beveled steel knife. It's actually a steel laminate with, believe it or not, samurai sword steel. The laminate part you can't really see, but it's a beveled knife. And again, the company is Ando. The, the brand of knife is less important than it is that it keeps its edge. Some of the cheaper reed making knives are really hard to sharpen in my experience. So getting a good quality knife will actually be of use to you. The next tool we have is the mandrel. The mandrel is used for wrapping. As you can see, I'm putting the oboe staple without cane on it, on the mandrel. It's used for two things, to wrap the reed and keep it stable so that you have something that you can really grab onto when you're wrapping the reed, which I'll show you momentarily. And the other use of a mandrel is to just hold it if you feel like doing that so that your hand doesn't cramp up when you're scraping. I usually don't use the mandrel for that purpose, but most players do. The next tools we have here are the, um, yeah, we have scissors, we have pliers. This will be for down the road. Um, they're not essential. They are available, of course, at any hardware store or these scissors at any drug store. Uh, the next items we have for specific to reed making are the plaques. We use a plaque for between the blades of the reed. These are convex plaques. This one is wood. This one is metal. And the convex quality, that means they're a little bit more raised in the middle than on the sides, really helps with the tip work. You can use flat plaques. You can use even guitar picks if you want, but I prefer convex plaques. To me, they fill out the inside of the reed a little bit better, and it gives you a little bit more control and a little bit more refinement in, on the sides of the tip, which we'll talk about later in a subsequent video of reed adjusting. The next tool we have, and again, very specific to oboe reed making, is the cutting block. The cutting block is used for, obviously, cutting, cutting the tip specifically. It is a convex surface. It's important that you know that it's a convex surface. If it's a flat surface, you actually can't cut it. It won't work. The next tool we have is a single edge razor blade. This is available at any hardware store. I like using single edge razor blades rather than a knife because it saves the tip of my knife, which I'd much rather use for scraping, preferably US made, in that they seem to be less brittle. These are available at any hardware store. And I think, oh yeah, materials. To start off with, we're going to be wrapping reeds, or a reed. This is the, the oboe staple. As you can see, this is a synthetic cork bottom. This is the part that goes into your horn. And then this is brass. There's a number of materials available, um, but this is your basic staple. It's usually around 47 millimeter in length, and some of them are a little bit shorter. The only thing that you really need to know about a staple, in my opinion, is that you need to know its length. And so when I get ready to wrap a reed, I will usually use this caliper to just double check in case there's a variation in its length so that I never ever make the mistake of over wrapping a reed. So, and going on with our materials, we need oboe cane. This is a soaked piece of shaped oboe cane. And we have our oboe thread, which is double F gauge thread. These are all available online at double reed, or I should say double reed or woodwind shops. They are not available generally at your local music shop. So we're going to commence now with the wrapping part of a reed. Keep in mind that wrapping reeds is actually 
while I've always found it to be kind of complicated, it takes a lot of practice. It has taken me much more time to learn how to make, how to wrap reeds rather than making reeds. So I made a slip knot here, by the way, and I'm just wrapping it around this C clamp because you need a doorknob, um, or the back of a chair, you need something so that you have some tension here. So I made a slip knot, I'm slipping that part through. So now I have this very taut piece of twine. I'm going to put my staple onto my mandrel. I'll set it down. I've already measured my staple just for insurance. You can also um, you can put a little pencil mark. There's a lot of things you can do to ensure that you do not overwrap that reed. What I'm sharing with you today is just my little system. And then what I do to make sure that the reed is nice and flush is I, I just scrape away the very ends. This make sure that it's, there's no lump at the bottom of the, of the wrap. You don't have to do it that way, but I just think it's one more way to keep it from leaking, which is, of course, always good. And now I'm putting the piece of cane onto my mandrel staple, etc. And what I'm doing here is that I'm taking a look and I'm making sure that this part of the cane is parallel with this flatter part of the mandrel. Not all mandrels are flat here. Some of them are actually round, in which case you're going to have to find another point of visualization here, maybe this part. I've always used this plaque or this mandrel and it's flat, so I find this to be very helpful because you want it to be as level as possible. The actual bore of a staple is not completely round, and that's why that is relevant. Okay, and I'm going to now measure from the very bottom of the staple up to the top, and I like my reed blanks to be around 72 millimeters long. There can be variation there. My finished reed is going to be around 70 millimeters long, so I want to you know, make sure that I have some allowance there. Um, and with practice, you'll find that you may like it at 73. I like them a little bit shorter because that's going to help me have a reed that does not leak. Okay, and then I'm holding it in my hand. I'm going to hold it in my hand now. Um, I've had phases where I've used rubber bands at this point, I've used wires, anything to keep it stable right here so that it doesn't move. And now I'm taking this and I am at approximately top, at the top of the staple roughly. I'm doing a couple of initial wraps and notice what I'm doing. I'm looking, I'm making sure that this up here is stable. And now I'm looking at the sides to see if they're open. I see it's a little bit open there. So what I'm going to do now is just adjust this ever so slightly, keeping everything nice and taut. I'll do another revolution. And I'm making sure it's nice and even. And I'm going to start doubling back. Now I have no real idea if this is wrapped high enough. So of course right now I'm going to hold it. And I'm going to, with my caliper, I'm going to measure and see where I'm at with this. And it's perfect. So it's right exactly where I want it to be. So that means it's at about 46 and a half millimeters long from the bottom here up to the top of the thread. And I don't want to ever overwrap. That's, that's an important consideration. I want it to be just right. And so now I'm doubling back and I'm making sure that the thread is nice and tight. Sometimes gaps lead to little leaks, and we want to avoid that if possible. I'm taking this, and I'm going to just clip it. And I'm just continuing it down. At this point, it's not so critical. I don't have to watch so much for leaks now. If you do end up with leaks, you can use nail polish, plumber's tape, gold beater skin is what we used to use. I guess it's still available. And I'm wrapping it all the way down pretty much to the cork. You can see a few little gaps here. I'm not going to worry about them right now. And I'm going to do a knot, a single knot. And I'm going to do another knot. And that should be enough. Remember that wrapping reeds takes time to really learn the skill. Um, make sure that they are 
even, that they don't tilt, make sure that they don't leak. Uh, reed makers and reed suppliers um, will sell blanks so that you don't have to go to the trouble of all of this because it is it takes practice. This one skill takes more practice, in my opinion, than just about any of the other skills, um, not including, of course, readjustment. Okay, I have a wrapped reed. I have one more step to do, and that is to take care of these little ears. And the ears are just left over from when we shape it. So I'm going to use my knife, and I'm just clipping the ears just clipping them off a little bit and I really like them to be super even and integrated well into the actual shape of the cane so I take a little bit of sandpaper and I just scrape it or sand it and just to kind of finish everything off and it makes for a nice smooth surface on the sides and it's just one of those kind of aesthetic things that I like to do. we go. And that is your wrapped read.